Jason and Medea, the story of the Golden Fleece, told in verse in four parts by Story Nori. Part four: The Escape. When the sun revealed the bright day at dawn, we gathered on Ares' field. The bulls snorted; they would not be thwarted, and to the yoke they would not yield. The crowd waited. My hero hesitated; he did not hasten in. But I knew he had bathed in the lotion I gave. I saw it from his gleaming skin. My father sneered. The Greek is weak. The riffraff jeered at his fear, and the Argonauts resembled schoolboys that trembled at a teacher that pulled their ears. Then Jason took a running jump over the fence he was in. The bulls snorted; they would not be thwarted. Let the battle begin. Achilles himself could not match that dash. You should have seen the strength of the boy. He broke the bulls in. He yoked them in. He fought like a hero of Troy. But it was me, of course, who was the cause of his force. The people had no notion. That the king's daughter had brought to Jason strength in a magic potion. It was an amazing sight to see the bulls plow the black earth that knew no pity. Their heavy hooves plodded the clods beneath the walls of the city. Then Jason took a tooth and threw it in the groove. It came from the mouth of a beast, the beast that guarded the golden fleece, the dragon beast of the east. And another he sowed in the earth's fold, and another sunk into the ground, and straight up they grew into a deathly crew. The skeleton stood all around. The bones of the attackers clattered and spattered. No doubt they were dealing in death. The horror he fought, like a hero ought, with all the breath he had left. And at last, he cast a glance at my eyes, and he recalled the advice I had given. And he bended low to pick up a stone, and hurled it at the bulls he had driven. And in a rage. They engaged the army of death. The bulls tore them apart. The skeleton men were scattered again, all by the cunning of my art. Now Jason claimed from the king, who had disdained him, the prize of the golden fleece, and the Argonauts shouted, "The enemy's routed. We claim the fleece for Greece." But losing is for losers, not for my dad. The king would not make peace. This substart Greek has a terrible cheek to claim the fleece for Greece, and his guards thundered. And seeing they were outnumbered, the Argonauts slipped back to their boat, and the king of Colchis, kissed by the gods, had shamed our name by his gloat. And full of indignation at the shame of our nation, to my father now I lied. I have an ache in my head. I am returning to bed. And my lie was justified. Stealing stealthily down to the sea, by the path I knew as a child, I found the forbidden boat hidden in a place that was dark and wild. And having hastened to Jason, I told him my plan. He said, "The dragon's horrific." Never mind, I said. I'll put him to bed with my drugs that are soporific. My sleepy pharmacy. I'll slip into the stream.
It's a powerful draught, and when the dragon drinks, into sleep he sinks. I'm a witch that knows her craft. And now, at last, he took me in his arms, and this is what he said. My dear, my dear, you have no peer. Back in Greece we shall wed. Sail with me across the wine-dark sea, in my ship as swift as a thought. By the Lady of Olympus, here are the lovely. I'll marry you like I ought. I was so naive. I was ready to believe. How I ached with fever. A man like this would kiss a woman and never leave her. What a fool I was to lose my cool and to be taken in by his lies. A whirling, swirling, girly girl, the sort I despise. And so, that night by the treacherous moon, I drugged the dragon's spring, and I put to bed his terrible head that snorted fiery rings. And past those paws with fearsome claws, past the beast that slept, my beautiful boy played my ploy, and into the cave he crept. Oh, how the gold glittered! Oh, how it shone like a star of heavenly light! That woolly wonder of the eastern world lit up the darkened night, like far off, far off. The lighthouse of Egypt. It was a fiery illumination, but it was a pity that seen from the city, it caused a sensation. Aetes, my father, the king of Colchis, told his trumpets to blare, and they manned the boats, every ship that could float, and revenge they did swear, for it was not just the fleece. That the pirates claimed for Greece, but the daughter of the king they took, and my father faced a shameful disgrace, an insult he would never brook. And the Argonauts rowed, but their ship was slowed by the weight of the gold within. The Argo carried the war god's cargo. The fleece that glittered like sin, and the Georgian navy flew across the waves like the steeds of the sea god Poseidon, and I must find a plan as best I can. I knew an island we could hide on, and my cunning plot I revealed to Jason, and I held back from him my worst. We set a trap. An ambush to attack the soldiers that landed first, and the first was no other than my own dear brother. I shot him with a golden crossbow, and with gory glee we threw his body in the sea, and swiftly away did we row. Now, if my father had a heart, it was hard to see. But he stopped to pick up his air, and in this way his chase was delayed. In war, what plot is not fair? And we crossed the seas, to the island of my aunt, the wondrous witch called Circe, and I begged her for the spell which she knew well, to make my father show mercy. And seeing her niece plead on her knees, this is what Circe said: "You, a woman, have given all to a man, and yet you are not even wet." Jason, my boy, become a man now. Do not falter. You have lit the fire of a fine woman's desire. Marry my niece on this altar, and now at last, with eyes downcast, the liar spoke the truth. Yes, it's true that I swore, 
but that was before I had seen the awful proof. This lady's no mere witch. She's a frightful witch. She cut up her brother with a knife. My life she saved, but her family she betrayed. Her soul with sin is rife. Do I deserve this harridan harpy? Zeus, how she carries on! Such curses she utters, the words of the gutter. Should I marry such a one? Yes, I betrayed, but what a price I paid. Did you not see how I feel? All my sinning gave us a beginning. In blood our love we sealed. Zeus, she's mad. I never asked her to be bad. How can you say that, you liar? You were obsessed by that fleece. You wanted it for Greece. And for you I went through fire. Now, this domestic fight could have gone on all night, but Circe settled it soon. Listen, my dears, Aeti's army is near. The ships lie in the lagoon. So see here, Jason, you pathetic man. Medea has saved your life. If you need my spell that works magic well, make my niece your wife. And Jason, in his woe, trembled like a doe. He knew his number was up. A woman must marry him, or an army would harry him. We both drank from the wedding cup. And later that day, the army lost its way. Circe's spell worked well. And now I was queen. I was happier than I had ever been. One day in his palace I would dwell. And Circe sent us sailing across the sea with a fair wind to Greece. And Jason brought me his beautiful trophy and soon forgot the fleece. I forgot my malice when I lived in his palace. I gave him some wonderful kids. I never grew frumpy, but at times I was grumpy and said what custom forbids. I let people know that I was the real show. I said more than I ought. I let slip the story of my part in his glory, of how the fleece was brought. And, like a true man, Jason began to allow his eyes to wander. And soon he found a princess who was bound to make his heart grow fonder. And when I gave him a piece of my mind, he had no need for force. The court granted his escape from me. It was a divorce, of course. He gave my name a scandalous fame. Then there was that dreadful drama. As for the rest, don't believe the press. By then I had grown much calmer. There's no need to believe, Euripides. Literature is all lies. Yes, his play is called Medea, a name men should fear. But revenge comes in many a guise. The gods sent me a chariot with wings, and I flew away from Greece. To the land of Colchis, kissed by the gods, and with me I took the fleece. And that was the fourth and final part of Jason and Medea, written for Story Nori by Bertie. And read by me, Richard Scott. And me, Natasha Gostwick. Our production features the music of Gabriella Burnell and the illustrations of Nick Hayes. So do drop by at storynori.com for the full effect. We do hope that you enjoyed our version of this ancient story. There are more Greek myths and many more audio stories from all over the world at storynori.com. 
for now from me, Natasha. And from me, Richard. Goodbye. Goodbye.